What's up everybody? It's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation and in today's video we are going to talk about finish, how do we increase speed and what are going to be two key things that we need to do. First things we need to do, we need to make sure that we stay maintain level shoulders, level hips and we're going to turn all the way through the finish. This is going to be one of the things that helps you set up that reverse. So many athletes out there having a really hard time with this. They can't ever seem to get the reverse, switch the feet, whatever you guys call it out there. And so what we're going to do is take an examples. Some of our guys here are going to demo. I'll have James come up. So we're going to look at a more advanced thrower. Now James is coming back from an Achilles injury. So he is throwing pretty well, still in advanced thrower, advanced movement. Then I have one of my former collegiate throwers or one of my former athletes who now a collegiate thrower. And then I have one of my high school athletes. So we're gonna have each of them demonstrate a stand throw. And the thing that we're gonna be looking at is kind of comparing the movement between the three. So I tell you what we'll do to show you how to work. We're gonna start out with what we call as a modified wheel, which is or AKA a half turn or a 180. And we're gonna have them work and kind of display how we need to maintain level hips and shoulders and turn through the finish. And we're gonna see the differences amongst the three athletes. And hopefully that's gonna help you out. So let's take a look at our high school athlete first. And this athlete is definitely a little too active with the upper body. We're not maintaining the, the exactly flat hips and shoulders and turning all the way through the finish. So we're gonna have him, then we're gonna move to our next athlete who's turning a little short and tilting at the finish. And then we're gonna look at our better athlete who's maintaining better level, but tends to lift a little bit. Okay, so one of the first things that we talk about is maintaining, setting up the right alignment and setting up the chain reaction. So here, what we're gonna do to make it a little bit more challenging, we're gonna have him do a static throw. Okay, static start and let's go. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's like a weird Okay. So, not bad, but we're gonna see one little thing that we always talk about that overrides the chain reaction is how you hold the discus. And this athlete actually is doing something odd that we're addressing. You'll notice his hand and how he's carrying that discus. And this is one of those things that seems small, but it's actually very significant because it's gonna make a big difference on how the athlete's able to generate stretch. But you'll notice because of that, that's gonna be one of the things that contributes to the shoulders level. Overall, pretty solid throw, but you're gonna notice that he kind of he's lifting early and his orbit's a little off, his shoulders are not completely level, and which doesn't allow him to turn all the way through the finish. Okay, so next up is our collegiate thrower. We'll go static. Alright. So again, you're gonna notice that this athlete, one of the things we'd be working on, he's coming through, his orbit's going here. So we're trying to get him to maintain everything here, keep his delivery side turning through and turning through so that he's gonna feel, if anything, more of an angle this way. Instead, he's kind of coming this way, shoulders tilt, and now he's coming through the discus like this, and that he's gonna lose a lot of power. So level shoulders, level hips, that's one of the simple cues that you can use to help you throw further, faster, but the key is you just have to not be so concerned about how far it's gonna go, feel the positions, then add the speed and try to throw it farther after you've done it a number of times so that you can feel the proper stretch in the proper position. Okay, next up, our advanced guy. So now James is a 200 plus foot discus thrower and we are gonna have him do it and he's been doing a really nice job of maintaining and staying moving through the finish. Level hips, level shoulders, and turning all the way through. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna notice again, so of the three, you'll notice that he had better contact with the ground, more level with the hips, and he was able to turn through the throw better. And now you can see he's gonna be able to add a lot more power to the throw. So these two guys were throwing two kilo discs, and our high school athletes throwing a one six. So today's quick long lesson was, again, level hips, level shoulders, turn all the way through the throw. Now again, remember, inside our throwing chain reaction system, we go through this extensively. We have 12 drills just for pillar six. We have another 10 drills for pillar five. So our power position, we have over 22 drills. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the link in the description. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below, and we'll see you guys on the next video.
Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.